Precalculus students, this is our second day on Section 7.4 with partial fractions. And we've hit a lot of these little start objectives already. I will be able to write decomposition factors. We've already done that. Decompose a fraction with distinct linear factors. Yep. Decompose a fraction with a repeated linear factor. We ended that with that yesterday. So the rest of this is what we have to deal with today. Decompose a fraction with an irreducible quadratic factor. Decompose a fraction with a repeated irreducible quadratic factor. And apply my knowledge of decomposition of partial fractions when graphing. So what we found out so far about the graphing is that what we're, what we're done with when we punch that in and compare that to the original graph. It should be the exact same graph, but this is talking about something else. It's talking about us learning how to graph hyperbolas easier. So example four shows how to find the partial fraction decomposition for a rat rational function whose denominator has an irreducible quadratic factor. So I look at the problem, and of course the heading is the same here. We're talking about decomposing a fraction with an irreducible quadratic factor. So I'm looking at the denominator and I see it has four terms. And I remember we used to factor that by grouping. So let's see if that works. We'll group the first two together and the last two together. Take an x squared out of the front two. And then we think, well, what can I take out of x minus 1? Well, take a 1 out. Because what we have to see is that that x minus 1 was actually in the whole denominator the whole time. So now we'll have x squared plus 1, the leftovers, and x minus 1 as our factors. So now I go to write this with my factors for the denominator. And I start thinking, well, x squared plus 1, that's an irreducible quadratic. We can't factor that. So I'm going to put this x minus 1 in front and the x squared plus 1 in the back, knowing that those are the factors that I need. Now is when we do our buildup and we say, OK, here's what we have so far. We know it has to be something over x minus 1 because x minus 1 was part of our denominator. And we know it has to have something over x squared plus 1 because that was a part of our denominator. Together, it would give us an LCD of the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x squared plus 1. Now, x minus 1 is a linear factor. So 1 minus 1 is 0, and a, a 0 degree polynomial is a constant. But for the irreducible quadratic, 2 minus 1, because degree minus 1 here would give us 1, is linear. So that'll be bx plus c. So we'll have a linear piece for that partial fraction. Now let's build it back up and think, all right, if it's going to have the common denominator of x minus 1 times x squared plus 1, the a is going to need the x squared plus 1. And the bx plus c is going to need an x minus 1. So we see this is a little more involved than what we had to do when we had the linear factors. We distribute our a, and we go ahead and use FOIL on the quantity bx plus c times the quantity x minus 1. So we have bx squared. Um, let's go ahead and do, well, it's not going to make a difference, but I really do like to keep the order having the b first. So outside times outside is minus bx, inside times inside is plus cx, and then a minus c. And now that we have this all expanded, we realize the squareds, the x squareds, we don't have a c for that, but we do know that has to work out to be 1x squared, because that was our answer. And then the x terms, negative bx plus cx, well, those have to come out to be 4x. And then our constants, we have an a minus c. And that has to come out to be 1. And again, always a good idea right here to count and make sure you had all those terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have them all. Now, before I just put it in the calculator blindly, I'm going to want to see, is this something that I should be able to solve with a little bit of algebra? But let me move this down, because if I can solve it with algebra, I'm going to need some more room. So right now, what we have from the first equation was a plus b equals 1. 
And then from the second, we have negative B plus C equals 4. And then we have A minus C equals 1. So I start thinking, hmm, can I finagle this somehow so that I could solve this algebraically? And we've got these top two equations that if we just added them together, the B would drop out. Then we'll have an A and a C, and we could use that along with the last equation. So I'm going to go ahead and add a plus b equals 1 and negative b plus c equals 4 as if we were doing elimination. And that will give me a plus c equals 5. And I did that so I can now add these two together. And I notice negative c and c, fantastic. That's going to drop out. 2a equals 6, divide by 2 and a equals 3. And now I could just do some back substitution up here. If a is 3, we look at this one and it says a plus b has to equal 1. So 3 plus b has to equal 1 would mean that b is going to be a negative 2. And then we can use the middle equation, negative b plus c. So the negative of negative 2 is 2. 2 plus c equals 4. Subtract 2 from both sides. And we have a c value of 2. So we have an a of 3, a b of negative 2, and a c of 2. And we'll go back and use our template that we had up here to write 3 over x minus 1 plus negative 2x plus 2 over x squared plus 1. So there is our partial fraction decomposition. And again, if this were on the portion of the test that said you could use a calculator, if you prefer to make a matrix out of those um, lead those coefficients and um, our answers up there, you could do that. But it's faster for us to see the algebra. And obviously, the points for the problem are going to come from the algebra. So that's the best thing to do. Now, we see this little information over here about checking those algebraic solutions. And it says, to become proficient in applying different methods to solve systems of equations and problems like those given in examples 3 and 4, we, should, we suggest you use the reduced row echelon and matrix inversion methods to double check your algebraic solutions. Yeah. If it's on a test, it's going to be worth a lot of points. So you could certainly put the matrix together and do your RREF. So in this case, our matrix would be the 1A plus 1B equals 1. So we'd put a 0 in for C. And then 0A, negative B plus 1C equals 4. And then we'd have 1A, 0B, negative C is a negative 1, and a 1. And you could certainly double check by putting that in for reduced row echelon form. You'll get the exact same answers. So matrices as a way to check. Example 5. This one says decomposing a fraction with a repeated irreducible quadratic factor. So now we notice that, well, the denominator is already factored because x squared plus 1, we just saw in the last problem, um, is an irreducible quadratic. So I know that one of these could be x squared plus 1, and the other one could be x squared plus 1 squared. Now, why do I say it that way? Because that's the only way we could split this one up. Remember, we're trying to put this into separate fractions so that it's not such a large polynomial that we're working with or two large polynomials with our numerator and our denominator. Because we have those irreducible quadratics, we have to put linear statements in our numerators. Again, irreducible quadratics have the power of 2. Subtract 1, and you get down to x to the first power. So that's what we need for our numerators. So now let's build them back up. The first fraction that has the ax plus b is going to need another x squared plus 1. So it has that common denominator of x squared plus 1 squared. but the second one doesn't need anything. 
it already has it. So we're going to go ahead and do FOIL or FIOL, depending on the order here, um, in order to see what we have. So first times first is AX to the third. Now I'm going to go to inside times inside to get the BX squared. Now it doesn't matter which way you do it, you'll be able to keep them organized. I just prefer that it went cubic, squared term, etc. So now outside times outside is plus AX, and last times last is plus B. As you've been able to see in these problems, organization is key. I don't think these are the toughest things we've ever done, but you definitely have to keep yourself organized as you're working through these. So now, I'm looking at what I have, and I try to think, well, gosh, I'm going to have a cube this time. So AX cubed, nothing else. No B, C, or D for that. And that has to come out to be, well, a 2, because that's what our answer was. So I've got my cube done, my squared, is bx squared equals, and I realize, well, that's the only one I have for that as well. It's going to have to be a negative 1. So already I know what a and b are. I'm just going to have to do a little bit more work for the rest of these. So I am down to the x terms, and that's ax, and I'll leave some space for b, cx. Oh, I didn't line this b up in the right spot. Let me fix that. There we go. So now we'll do ax and CX, and that has to come out to our X term, which is 5. And then finally, any constants that we have, and that's B plus D, and those have to come out to 0. All right, let's go ahead and put these in a form that we can take the X's out. So A equals 2. That was nice, very quick. B equals negative 1, we've got it, and then A plus C equals 5, and B plus D equals 0. Now, you could certainly make a matrix out of that, but this would definitely be one we would want to see you do algebraically because it'd be really silly to take the time to put this in, unless you're going to check it. So now, if A plus C equals 5 and A is 2, well, that must mean that C is 3. And if B plus D has to equal 0, that would make them opposites. And if B is negative 1, then D has to equal 1. Again, you could make a matrix out of this if you wanted to. We have 1A, 0Bs, 0Cs, 0Ds, and a 2. And then we have 0As, 1BX squared, 0, 0, negative 1. And then 1, 0, 1, 0, 5, and 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So you definitely could check this using reduced row echelon form to see if you get the same answers. But you'll still get A equals 2, B equals negative 1, C equals 3, and D equals 1. And then you can finish writing your partial fraction decomposition. So it was AX, so 2X plus B is going to be minus 1. And we had that over X squared plus 1 plus CX, 3X plus D over the quantity X squared plus 1 squared. Again, the other way to check is graphically, you know, to make sure that the graph that you had originally um, will give you exactly the same thing that we had to start with. 2x cubed minus x squared plus 5x all over the irreducible quadratic of x squared plus 1 squared. So this one wasn't too bad. It didn't have a ton of terms that we had to work our way through, and that's always helpful. So now the other part of our objective was applications here. Each part of the partial fraction decomposition of a rational function plays a central role in the analysis of its graph. We can use it to describe the end behavior of the graph at its asymptotes. Example 6 is investigating the graph of a rational function. Compare the graph of the rational function f of x equals 2x squared plus x minus 14 over x squared minus 4 with the graphs of the terms in its partial fraction decomposition. So with this one, we notice, hey, it's a 2x squared on the top, and it's an x squared minus 4 on the bottom. That's one we should divide out and see what we get. 
And I do recommend long division for this. Well, first of all, we would have to because our divisor x squared minus 4 is not in that x minus a format. So we go back and say, hmm, how do we get x squared to be 2x squared? I'd have to multiply it by 2. And if we do that, we get 2x squared minus 8. I'm going to line that up over here with the 8 that we already have. Change the signs and add those. So 2x squared minus 2x squared is gone, but we will have the x that we haven't done anything with yet. And then we have this minus 6. So this is 2 plus x minus 6 over the divisor x squared minus 4. So the function itself can be written as 2 plus x minus 6 over x squared minus 4. So now what we're interested in doing is figuring out how to decompose that little fraction. And that comes from the fact that x squared minus 4 is a difference of two squares. So we factor that. And we know we're going to have this 2 in here, but our job is to figure out how to get the partial fraction decomposition for x minus 6 over x plus 2 times x minus 2. So that's going to be a over the quantity x plus 2 plus b over the quantity x minus 2. And our first little fraction is going to need the x minus 2. Our second one will need the x plus 2. And we're going to get a little 2 by 2 here. So we've got our x terms first. Ax plus bx has to equal, and it was x minus 6, so that's 1x. And then we have negative 2a plus 2b, and that was a minus 6 up there. And so this one, like I said, it's a 2 by 2, so we'd probably just solve it algebraically. So a plus b equals 1, and negative 2a plus 2b equals negative 6. And we would probably multiply the top one by 2 because we can see the elimination method working really nice here. So 2a minus 2a is 0, and 2b plus 2b is going to be 4b. And then we'll have 2 times 1 is 2, plus negative 6 is negative 4, and b will equal a negative 1. And then we'll go ahead and plug it back into a plus b equals 1. So a plus a negative 1 equals 1. And we'd add 1 to both sides and get a equals 2. So our f of x, if I can fit this up here. Oh, let me move these down. In fact, I'm going to turn it off so I can make those brighter as well. All right, so it was a over x plus 2. So there's that 2 plus 2 over x plus 2 plus negative 1 over x minus 2. So this is us breaking apart that fraction of x minus 6 over the quantity x squared minus 4. And you look at this and you say, well, how is that easier? Again, remember, what we're trying to do is use this for something. And if it's integration, it's easier to do when they're broken apart. And if it's graphing, the reason we're doing this is to see what happens when we look at the graphs and how do they compare when we break all of this up to what we had originally? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break this apart and say f of x equals negative 1 over x minus 2. So just taking one of the pieces here. The vertical asymptote for that would be at 2. So x equals 2. And then we put a few points in on the left and the right-hand side of our little asymptote. So we'd probably put in 0, 1, 3, and 4. If you put 0 in, it's going to be negative 1 over negative 2, which is 1 half. If you put a 1 in, you'll have negative 1 over negative 1, which is 1. And then we put a 3 in, and 3 minus 2 is 1, so negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. We put a 4 in, and 4 minus 2 is 2, so we'll get a negative 1 half. It's nice and symmetric. That's why I'm not spending a whole lot of time talking you through those steps. 0, 1 half, 1, 1, 3, negative 1, and 4, negative 1 half. 
and there it is. So that is one part of the decomposition that we did. And here is another part. So let's have this one be f of x equals 2 over x plus 2. So this one now has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, the 0 of the denominator. We would make a quick little table of this one and include numbers like negative 3, negative 4, negative 1, and 0 just on either side of that. So if you put a negative 3 in, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, and 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. Put a negative 1 in. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1, and 2 divided by 1 is 2. Put a 0 in. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So negative 3, 2. Negative 4, negative, oops, negative 2. Not positive 2, Cedarholm. Negative 3, negative 2. Negative 4, negative 1. And then negative 1, 2. And 0, 1. And I guess I should mention, because you guys might not have seen this for quite a while, we're doing this right now in Algebra 2, that what I'm using here is the general form y equals a over x minus h plus k for these two. And that means that the k value, the horizontal asymptote, will be y equals 0. So that's how I know these are not going to touch the x-axis. All right, now the last one is, okay, what if we graph the whole thing? So 2x squared plus x minus 14 over x squared minus 4. And I'm just going to go ahead and talk through this with you, but then I'm going to put up the branches because what we're looking at is not, oh gosh, let's go through and do all of the stuff that we already talked about forever when we were doing our graphing before. It's how does having the partial fraction decomposition help you with this? Now, this one, because they have the same degree, our horizontal asymptote is going to be 2 over 1. This is the one where you think of infinity here and talk about that. And then this graph looks like this. So you just use your graphing calculator and get some of those points. Now, what are we supposed to see here? that's supposed to tell us this helps with graphing. And what we want to look at is this, the fact that as our graph approaches 2 from both the left and the right, it's going up and it's going down. And as you come over here, we can see that the graph as it's approaching 2 from the right and from the left matches that behavior. And then the other piece, the other partial fraction piece that we had there, had an asymptote of negative 2. And as we approach it from the left, it's going down. And as we approach from the right, it's going up. If we go to the entire polynomial rational equation there that we had, a rational function that we had, um, that behavior stays the same. So what we see is our partial fraction decomposition actually gives us what is happening at those vertical asymptotes. So that's the reason that we can use this to help us graph. It's just another piece of the puzzle as far as our graphing goes. Last one. The last one is, let's just write that partial fraction decomposition. We're not going to solve, but let's write it for this one, because this one is messy. So first things first, is that factorable? So let's do a little b squared minus 4ac. And hopefully about this point you say, oh, that's going to be negative. Yeah, I don't even need to know what it is. That's not factorable. So that's an irreducible quadratic. Now these others. These are linear factors. So if I'm going to break this up, I will need an ax plus b over x squared plus 2x plus 5 plus, now it's x minus 4 to the fourth. So that means I have the possibility of just an x minus 4 
but there could have been an x minus 4 squared, there could have been an x minus 4 cubed, and there could have been an x minus 4 to the fourth. All we get to see is the end result of the denominator, but all of those are considered linear factors because inside the parentheses it's an x to the first. So ax plus b, c, d, e, and f. And then at the end, we have an x plus 3. So obviously, that would have to be a part of our denominator, and we're up to g. So there it is. We have that irreducible quadratic with ax plus b, and then we have our constants c, d, e, f, and g to take care of all of the rest of them. So that will finish up the second day of 7-4 with partial fraction decomposition. So we're just using more, more of the partial decomposition, or partial fraction decomposition. I just was going to say that backwards. We're using this to say, how does this help us with different things? And one of those pieces was applying this to the graphs. So that is 7-4.